Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today I'm going to teach you a simple trick to apparently speed up wildcard searches in your Microsoft Access database. And I say apparently speed up because it's all about user perception. We're not going to actually speed up the search that much, but the user will think it's much, much faster if they type in the complete value. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Michael from Council Bluffs, Iowa, one of my Platinum members. He writes in, I love the single field search button you showed us in one of your videos. I've got a minor problem, however. When I use it to search for a field like email address, it takes forever. If I use the actual access search box and type in the complete email address, it finds it almost instantly. Is there a way to speed up your search? Michael, you answered your own question. If you type in the complete email address, and you're not relying on a wildcard search, it is much, much faster, especially if your field is indexed, which it should be. If anything you're gonna search on a lot, you wanna make sure is indexed. But as soon as you go into a wildcard search where you have to have access find part of the value, it's gotta look through all those values. Right? It's gotta look through all the records, so that's why it takes a lot longer to perform a wildcard search. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little trick. We're gonna take the code that I gave you in the first video, and then we're going to say, okay, what we're gonna do is if the user types in the complete value, we're gonna, we're gonna do a D lookup first and see if it's in the table, which should be relatively quick. If it doesn't find it, then resort to the wildcard search. All right, let's see what that looks like. But first, this is a developer level video, so we will be writing some code. This is a follow-up to my search button video, so if you have not watched this yet, go watch it. We make a little button here where we can put it next to any field and then search on just that field. If you don't know what indexing is, go watch this video. Today we're gonna add a D lookup to our code, so go make sure you know what a D lookup is. And we're gonna use the NZ function to see if we get a null value back. All right, these are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want a copy. And we're gonna go into the customer form. We're gonna make a single field search button for the email address, so design view. And I'm just for the sake of class, I'm gonna just clear all this stuff out of here. We don't need it. Goodbye. Okay. Next to email address, we'll put a little button. Do this here real quick. Okay. Form design, grab a button, drop it next to email, cancel the wizard. We don't need it. And we'll put just a little, put a little search in here. In the other video, I show you how to put a little picture with a magnifying glass. You can do all that if you really want to. Okay. Give it a good name. Come over here to all. This will be search button, search, let's call it search email, because you can make one for each field if you want to. And yes, there's a way you can just make one search button and then you click on the field and then click on the button and it'll look at the last field that you were on. I don't like that. I like having one right next to the button or right, right next to the field you're searching for. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want. All right, let's recreate the code that we created in the last video real quick. So we need a variable dim s as a string, s equals input box, Enter email to search for whatever, All right? Comma email search is the, the, the title. And then default value, we'll just uh, leave that blank. Okay, if S equals blank, if it's an empty string, then exit sub. That means the user clicked cancel, we didn't type anything in. And now here's where we do the wildcard search. We're searching by basically setting the filter, right? Me.filter equals email like wildcard inside of quotes, right? Wildcard and S and close up the wildcard, right? Just like that. Me.filter on equals true. And at this point, it's gonna use the like and the wildcard search with whatever you type in to look through all of the records and bring back the ones that match that. Okay, and that's great if you're searching for something like a domain, let's say you wanna search for all the people who are you know, at amicron.com, right? And it'll bring those people back. And you can see there's a bunch of them because I put all amicron.com email addresses in here because in some of my older classes, I used, you know, random makeup uh, uh, email addresses like xyz.com. And I started getting complaints from people at those domains. Like, hey, we own xyz. I'm not saying it was xyz.com, but you know, uh, please don't do that in your videos anymore. <laughs> so now all the fake email addresses I use are at one of my domains. 
I think I did Captain Picard or Captain Kirk at gmail.com one time, and it came back like, uh, no. <laughs> All right, but the downside is even if this field is indexed, you still the access still has to go through and pull them all out of the table. Now, I've only got, what, 30 records in a small local database. My main database, right, I got like 50,000 customers in it and 100 and some thousand email addresses on my regular email list. It could take a few minutes. So what you can do instead is if the user types in the actual email address, like they're copying and pasting it from an email that they were sending, they want to look this person up, right? You can speed this up tremendously by first just checking to see if that actual exact email address exists in the table. If it does, go to that one. If not, then do the wildcard search, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our code. We'll need another variable, just ID as along, okay? And right down here, after they've typed in what they're looking for, we're gonna say ID equals DLOOKUP, look up the customer ID from the customer table where the email address equals whatever the user types in. Okay, we want to handle null values here, so NZ that whole thing. Return a zero if it doesn't exist. So now the DLOOKUP runs. If it finds that exact email address, it's going to return you the customer ID. Okay, so if ID is not zero, then we're going to say me.filter equals customer ID equals the ID me. And we'll do the me.filter on the bottom, right? Else me.filter equals that. And if, see, if it finds it, filter based on that ID, which is going to be much, much faster. That's one record, got the ID already. It's an index field, boom. Otherwise, if it doesn't find it, put on the wild card, fil wild card filter. I still can't talk. I'm still getting over a cold, people. And I'm going in for surgery tomorrow. So, mm, okay. <laughs> we ready? Let's try it. Save. All right. Again, I'll search for, how about 599cd.com? Okay, that works. There's three of them. And let me look for exactly mine. Let's see, right here. Amicron at gmail.com. And there I am exactly, too. And I found my exact record. And again, it's hard to see the difference in time with this database, but trust me, I know from experience uh, with my one database that I've got 50,000 emails in it, a, uh, an exact search like that takes less than a second. If I search for a domain like at gmail.com, it takes at least seven or eight seconds. So this will apparently speed up your user's experience of the search, all right? And again, make sure your email address field is indexed. Either no duplicates or duplicates okay, depending on what you want. I don't want duplicated emails in my system. If you want that, that's okay. And this works for any field you want to search on. And that's it. That's your tip. So, Michael, I hope, I hope that helps you out. That's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the 
tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.